in. And this is the way it always happens. I've been looking at a cycle of evil in my life. Don't talk like that. Speak with the spirit of faith within you. And talk to this champion of financial difficulty I have overcome. I said I have overcome. And great will be the blessing in your life in Jesus' name. Verse 45, then David said to the Philistine, Thou comest to me with a sword, and with a spirit, and with a spear, and with a shield, but I come to thee. Stop there for a moment. Thou comest to me. I come unto thee. Take the away from thee. The initiative position away from the enemy. Thou to me. Retreat because that. When Satan is fighting the glory to be the creature of the heavens and the earth, the creature of the heavens and the earth will always win. And when somebody that brings the spear and the shield and then the sword, when that person is fighting with a person that comes in the name of the Lord God of Abraham, of Isaac, and of Jacob, the one that comes in the name of the Lord will always win. Verse 45 again, thou comest to me with a sword, with a shield, and with a shield. But I come to thee in the name of the Lord of hosts, the God of the armies of Israel, whom thou hast defied. The God of the armies of Israel, whom thou hast defied. I can imagine uh, the Philistine, the champion of the, of the Gentiles, of the Philistines, saying, but I cannot see him. Ah, don't be fooled. Because invisible powers are always more powerful than visible powers. Think about it. Invisible powers are always more powerful, more mighty, greater than visible powers. The things we don't see, they are more powerful than the things we see. We can see your shield. We can see your hair. We can see your sword. But you cannot see the God of Israel. And he's a mighty warrior. And because you cannot see him, that should show you already. The invisible is more powerful than the visible. And that invisible power of the almighty God will walk in your life today. It says, but I come to thee in the name of the Lord. You know that those spears and shields and swords, sometimes they get blunt. And you have to go away and sharpen them again. But the name of the Lord never gets weary. Never gets weak. It's never blunt. And it never fails. And then in verse 46, this day will the Lord deliver thee to faith. We, we believe. Therefore have we spoken. A person having the spirit of faith will confess. And will pronounce. And will proclaim. The result before we see it. You see it by faith. You know it by faith. Just like I know, all the bondages of your life, they're going to be broken at the time of prayer. You see all those things crumbling down. All those things fleeing away from your life. Because we say it. Because we've seen it. We say it before it happens. And because we know it's going to happen, that's the reason why we declare it. Because the power of God, the name of Christ, the name of the Lord, a mighty tower, and the righteous runneth into it, and he is saved. Look at that, verse 46 again, this day, this day for the last time, this day, you see when you speak with the spirit of faith, you are not prolonging the time, and you are not extending the time, and you are not wondering, when is it going to happen? You decide it. I told you, you take the initiative away from the hand of the champion of the Philistines. You take the initiative away from the hand of the opponent. And then you have the initiative now and you say, This day will the Lord deliver thee into my hand. And I will smite thee and take thine head 
from thee and I will give the carcasses of the host of the Philistines this day unto the fowls of the air and to the wild beasts of the earth that all the earth may know that there is a God in Israel your friends will know you've gone somewhere your enemies will know you've been somewhere and even your relatives that are wondering when are you going to be free from this when you get back home they will know that God has touched you and something definite has happened in your life in Jesus name and all this assembly shall know that the Lord saveth not with sword and spear for the battle is the Lord's and he will give you into our hands. The battle is the Lord's and he will give you into our hands. Remember once again we having the same spirit of faith. The same, the same, the same spirit of faith. And I told you when you say you have the same spirit of faith you are making comparison with another individual was we'll in the case of Caleb was we'll in the case of David now in 2nd Kings chapter 6 2nd Kings chapter 6 we having the same spirit of faith 2nd Kings chapter 6 what did in verse 16 and he answered fear not for they that be with us are more than they that be with them. Spirit of faith. We having the same spirit of faith. We believe. Therefore have we spoken. We also believe. And therefore speak. Look at Elisha here. Telling his own servant. What's the background to this story? Look at it from verse 15 now. From verse 15, and when the servant of the man of God was risen early and gone forth, behold, and host compassed the city with horses and chariots. The host, the host compassed the city with horses and chariots. Once again, make a comparison. Once again, make an analysis. It says, and host compassed the city but is there any other host of course yes because the lord god almighty is referred to as the god of hosts and as the host of the armies of heaven don't, don't forget any time that if you see something in the physical there is something greater in the spiritual if you see something in the natural there is something greater in the supernatural realm every time you see a host then you become afraid because you are not making analysis and comparison there is a physical natural visible host here then there is another one the host of the armies of heaven invisible and mighty and powerful unconquerable and when you make that comparison then you have the spirit of faith you'll be able to speak with the spirit of faith in verse 15 and his servant said unto him at last my master how shall we do look at this host and then he said you're looking at the wrong thing at the wrong direction at the wrong group look at verse 16 and he said fear not for they that be with us are more than they that be with them. And Elisha prayed and said, Lord, I pray thee, open his eyes that he may see. And the Lord opened the eyes of the young man. And he saw, and behold, the mountain was full of horses and chariots of fire round about Elisha. Have you seen verse 15? The host compassed the city both with horses and chariots. Have you seen verse 17? In verse 17, horses and chariots too, but of fire round about Elisha. You see, there are people, they only see only one host. 
of horses and chariots but they don't look on the other side to see the spiritual the supernatural the unconquerable host of chariots and horses of fire now they about elisha and they about the people of god and when they came down to him elisha preached unto the lord and said smite this people I pray thee with blindness, and he smote them with blindness according to the word of Elisha. We have overcome. Because you see, we have the same spirit of faith. The same, the same, the same spirit of faith as that man of God, Elisha. That even when you see the host, the natural host, the people that come as if they're going to take you and destroy you, then you understand that you have the same spirit of faith as Elisha. And you know that they that are with you are greater. They are more than they that be with them. And then because of that, you know that you are going to overcome. You have overcome already. In Matthew chapter 8, we have in the same spirit of faith. Matthew chapter 8. I'm reading to you from verse 8. The centurion answered and said, Lord, I am not worthy that thou shouldest come under my roof. But speak the word only, and my servant shall be healed. Speak the word only. That's the spirit of faith. We believe, so have we spoken. We also believe, and so we speak. Speak the word only, and my servant shall be healed. Speak the word only, I will be healed. Speak the word only, my wife will be healed. Speak the word only, my husband will be healed. Speak the word only, and that mother in the hospital shall be healed. Because we have in the same spirit of faith, we speak according to what is written. And because we speak that word of faith, it will be done, it will be accomplished in Jesus' name. Now, hindrance to the spirit of faith hindrances to the spirit of faith if we have the same spirit of faith what hinders our own faith from working from operating to start with did you hear what elisha told his own servant he said fear not fear not for they that be with us are more than they that be with them. Fear not. Why did he start with fear not? Because if you allow fear to rise up in the heart, the spirit of fear will overwhelm, overshadow, overcome, overthrow the spirit of faith. If you allow the spirit of fear in you, that spirit of fear will overthrow, overwhelm, overcome that spirit of faith. That's why you need to understand one thing, one of the things that hinder. The spirit of faith is a spirit of fear. In 2 Timothy chapter 1 verse 7. 2 Timothy chapter 1. Verse 7, for that's not given us the spirit of fear. God has not given us the spirit of fear. When somebody is sick, and every time he's think dreaming of death, what kind of spirit is operating there? That's the spirit of fear. When you have a dream in the night, and then you wake up in the morning, and you interpret it to me. That defeat, death, or disease has now come. What's operating? The spirit of fear. When your boss calls you and he just makes a minor correction, this is not right, please don't do like this again. And immediately when you leave that boss, you are thinking of the termination of your appointment. What's operating? That's that the spirit of fear. The boss did not even talk about termination of appointment. And when something happens and they bring news from home, and immediately you are thinking, you know, those people are bracing, they are bracing up again. 
they hated my father they hated my people now they're going to jump on me and they're going to do whatever they can do their magical power traditional power to destroy me what's operating you that's the spirit of fear and it's a hindrance to the operation of the spirit of faith god has not given us the spirit of fear but of power and of love and of a sound mind let's look at first john chapter 4 in first john chapter 4 we're looking at verse 3 and we're looking at verse 6 first john chapter 4 verse 3 and every spirit that confesses not that jesus christ is come in the flesh is not of god this is that spirit of antichrist this is that spirit of antichrist what spirits fight against hinder the manifestation of the spirit of faith number two the spirit of antichrist christ can do all things he says i'm the way i'm the truth i'm the life and then when you deviate from that and you say i don't think that this one is going to be solved by the lord jesus alone if a person does not run around to do this and do that i don't think that this one is not a problem for prayer the spirit of antichrist operating in, ma in many lives and when you know jesus says something and then you contradict it you are anti you are opposed you are contradictory to the way of Christ, to the watch of Christ, and to the plan of Christ, and to the promise of Christ. That's the spirit of Antichrist. But when you are in unity with Christ, and you confess what is said, and you confess what he did, and you proclaim what he achieved on the cross of Calvary, that's the spirit of Christ and the spirit of faith. But the spirit of Antichrist will hinder the, uh, the oppression of the spirit of faith look at verse 6 we are of God he that knoweth God heareth us he that is not of God heareth us not hereby we know the spirit of truth and the spirit of error the spirit of error the spirit of error that also works against the spirit of faith and when you get into false doctrine, you must say, you know, add some water, holy water, before the blood of Jesus will work, spirit of error. We must add some candle and incense before, this, before the name of Jesus will effectively work, the spirit of error. And we must go and see some people that will carry out this for us and carry out that for us. And maybe go to the cemetery, the graveyard, before we can be free from this, the spirit of error. When you allow the spirit of error to operate in your life, it contradicts, it overwhelms, it conquers, it destroys the spirit of faith. Second Kings chapter 7. In 2 Kings chapter 7, I'm reading from verse 1 from verse 2. Then Elisha said, Hear ye the word of the Lord. Thus says the Lord, Tomorrow, about this time, shall a measure of fine flour be sold for a shekel, and two measures of barley for a, for a shekel in the gate of Samaria. Then a lodge on whose hand the king leaned and said the man of God and said, Behold, if the Lord will open the windows of he in heaven, might this thing be? When the spirit of faith is talking through a man of God, a woman of God, encouraging us, telling us, This is the word of the Lord. This time tomorrow, all these mountains you see, you'll see them no more. Give me a good amen. If somebody now, a Lord, when it says a Lord, 